Hey guys, I'm Lee Morris with fstoppers.com and today I'm going to be teaching you how to take an automatic multi-row panorama. Now let's say you wanna take a large landscape photograph and print it on the wall and you want the most resolution possible. This is the best way to do it. In front of me here is Syrup's new motion control kit. Each one of these units is a Genie Mini 2. Now you could use just one of these independently and you'd have the ability to pan the camera. You could use that for time lapses or for standard panoramas. But if you connect both of these together, it gives you both X and Y controls so that you'll be able to take time lapses, panning and tilting, or what we're going to be doing today is taking automatic multi-row panos. Now, before I got out here, I just had to connect these two Genie 2 units together, and then I connected my Fujifilm X-T30 to this unit itself. Now, before I get started with the app, I do need to connect the controller to one of these Genie 2 units. This is going to allow the motion control rig to control the camera and tell it when to shoot. Now, I'm gonna open up the Genie 2 app, and in the upper right-hand corner, I'm going to click on the connect screen. You'll see the pan and tilt option here. I'm going to connect to both of these. And then I'm going to click on Create Content and Panorama. Now the first thing I need to do is set my camera sensor size. I'm going to set it to APS-C because I know the sensor size of this camera. If you don't know what your camera is, check it out online. It's really easy to find. Camera's focal length, I'm going to set that to 35 millimeters and then make sure I zoom in to 35 millimeters on my lens. Aspect ratio, I'm going to be shooting at 3.2, orientation, landscape. And now at this point, we just need to set our start point and our end point. I'm going to move the camera and let me get a correct exposure. And then I'm gonna move down to the bottom right hand corner and set my end point. Now at this point, I can just tap end and done. Now on this last screen here, we can see how many shots the pano is going to take. It's cool that it does this completely automatically based on your sensor size and your millimeter that you choose for your lens. The one thing that you wanna keep an eye on here is the wait time in between each shot. Now I'm shooting at one half of a second for my shot here. So giving this a one second interval in between each shot is probably fine. It's going to first move to the start point and I can hit record and it will take photographs for me. Now keep in mind, you always wanna shoot in full manual and something else that's super important you want to lock your focus as well. So make sure you flip your camera into manual focus or else you're gonna miss focus on one of these shots. Now, in my example here, I'm shooting at 35 millimeters. Keep in mind that the more you zoom in, the more photographs it's going to have to take to capture the scene. I'm also really exaggerating the scene and I'm shooting far wider on the top and the bottom than I think I want. Remember, it's just extra data. We'll be able to crop in and post if we want to and we're gonna have so much resolution to play with. So as you can tell guys, the sun set about 20 minutes ago. It's getting pretty dark out here. I think I got the shot. Let's head back into post and I'll show you how to put all of these photographs together. Now combining all of these shots together in Lightroom could not be easier. As you can see, I already have them all imported here. I'm going to click on the very first shot, hold shift, click on the last shot, right click and go to photo merge panorama. Now at this point, you could choose a projection type, spherical, cylindrical, or perspective. I personally think spherical looks fine, so I'm simply going to click merge. Now this is going to take a few seconds or minutes depending on how many raw files you shot, but then it's going to create a separate DNG file right at the end of all of these images that is fully editable. And here it is. I'm going to click on the develop module. And as you can see, this will still edit as though it's a raw file. If we want to change the white balance, we can still do that. The first thing that we need to do obviously is crop in. As I said earlier, I purposefully shot way too wide, knowing that I would have tons of extra resolution to play with. So I am not worried at all about cropping out a lot of this image here. Now, of course, we can do standard global edits easily in Lightroom, but if we wanna do more fine-tuned editing, we can simply right-click, edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2019.
I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Definitely check out Syrup's new motion control kit. The Genie 2 system is awesome. You can use one or two together. And if you want to add it on top of the Genie linear system with the slider, you can add side to side movement as well. And of course, if you do that, that unlocks so many options for video production or time lapse creation. It's absolutely amazing. Check it out.